Thank you for joining us on this episode of Tax Matters as we join the whole world in celebrating International Workers' Day. We also celebrate with Muslims all over the world on the occasion of Idel El Fetri, not forgetting that the Christian's Lenten season just ended. What a coincidence. We pray that God Almighty will reward us all for the sacrifices we have made at this period. Last episode, we went on an educational voyage with you, taking entrepreneurs through what is required of them as far as taxing obligations are concerned. The platform, powered by the Lagos and Justice Society of the CITN, was the stakeholder engagement put together to enlighten business owners plying their trade at the computer village in Ikeja, Lagos, in commemoration of the 2022 Annual Tax Week. As was pointed out several times on that episode, as a result of the federal system of government operated in Nigeria, business owners are subject to taxes, levies, duties and charges from federal, state and local governments. It was at the point when Alaji Mohamed Sodik, state coordinator, Lagos mainland east of the FRS, was concluding his presentation on taxing powers of the federal government through the FRS that withdrew the cuttings on that episode. On this episode, we'll begin with the obligations of entrepreneurs to the state government where their business is located. There is a long list of taxes payable to state governments across the country. Personal income tax, withholding tax, capital gains tax, stamp duties where individuals are concerned, business premises and many more. Dr. Falashade Koka. Director Informal Sector and Special Duties at the LRS spoke on taxing powers of states at the event. Of course, she spoke to specific issues concerning the computer village. We deal with personal income tax. That is income that is personal on what you earn or businesses that you do and profits that you make. And what do I mean? Yes, we have 40 tax stations in Lagos State and we also have 40 mini tax stations. The tax stations deal with the people that are either on pay as you earn, if you own a business and um, you have staff, so you have to file your returns before, between the 1st of um, January and 31st of January. If you are a business person, as most of the people in the um, computer village will fall into, you have to file your tax between the 1st of January and 31st of March. Even where it is nil tax, you need to still file what do we mean by filing? It's just basically saying that for the previous year, this is the business you have done, this is the profit you have made, these are the um, expenses or thereabout that you have also had, and then you put everything, and then you can also voluntarily assess yourself because we prefer people to voluntarily comply. So you can voluntarily assess yourself also, and by the time you compute it, or where you cannot do that computation, you can also take advantage of professionals. That's why the Chartered Institute of Taxation is there, to give you people that are experts in computing taxes, and they will be able to um, guide you and help you compute it so that you can do the needful within the stipulated time. We've realized that um, not every business is structured. So that is what gave back to the informal sector. The informal sector is to take um, into cognizance people that are not too lettered or businesses that are not too structured who do not keep their income and expenditure um, um, statements. We also know that a lot of people might not understand English or they might not understand the fine details of computation. So the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service has created what is called the Ibile Hub. So that's what you see me dressed in because I'm the director of informal sector and special duties. So I deal with most of the people in Computer Village. Likely, you will have those that have um, small, um, like, what, what would I call? I wouldn't want to call it a cake lamp, but they have small businesses on the road. Those people that are technicians and all that. So those are the people that really fall under the informal sector. But because we also know that a lot of people in the computer village do not keep proper books of accounts. So we handle people also within that um, area. You'd have the people in the um, plazas that you have mentioned. So we have staff that go into those plazas, 
to help you with the form A, for you to fill your forms, to have you pay. And then we also have the POS um, systems with us. So you don't even have to go to the banks anymore. There are people who are within us that are trained to take your payments. And at the get-go, once you have those payments done, they give you what you always have through the POS. That's that small printout. So you have the small printout given to you as acknowledgement of your payments. And then, not later than the next day, you must have your receipt. In the year 2015, the Joint Tax Board comprising the Federal Inner Revenue Service, the 36 States Internal Revenue Services, and the FCT IRS introduced what is known as presumptive tax regime as a platform to bring small business owners into the tax net at sector-specific and affordable tax rates. Those that you have that are technicians and all that, on the roads of, of um, Computer Village, we've created what would likely be called um, a presumptive tax kind of payment. So they've been pegged to a certain amount because we know that, yes, they are not doing major business like the import and export um, people. We've also looked at associations, people that fall within the bracket of associations. So while you might not have to pay too much, but also we would look into your income and then we would give you what um, is categorized within um, associations. So we've taken time as much as possible to look at the different strata of people that fall within the taxpayer um, sector and for them to be able to fulfill their obligations. And then even for those within the presumptive tax bracket, you can even pay twice or more because we understand again the ease of doing business and we know that most of you make money on a day to day. Let's go taxing. Hand in hand, cheerfully. We go taxing as birds of a feather that flock around to make a living. With our sinners drawn on the field, we go to pay our taxes cheerfully, knowing that our lives come to naught, without us taxing together, to build our homestead, to mend our lives anew, to make our lives whole. Let's go taxing, hand in hand cheerfully, drawing our strength like a boom that breaks naught. For taxing together makes us also. Dr. Yemi Sonny, chairman of Lagos and Jersey Society of the CITN, drivers of the day's event, came up once again, this time to situate the role of qualified and licensed tax practitioners in the whole metrics. Before we hear from the coalition, I need you to hear from me and from us, the Lagos and District Society. Because we have made ourselves available as the channel to be able to resolve issues that you have with LIRS and FRS. They've told you about your responsibilities to tax in respect of your business. Your business could either be a limited liability company or an enterprise. Now, if you have a limited liability, co liability company, there are certain requirements of the laws that you really that you are meant to keep up with. One of them is um, preparing an audited account. And when you have an audited account, it makes it easy for the tax authority to be able to look at your books and be able to access you to tax. And as an enterprise, there are less statutory obligations required of you when you have an enterprise that you're using for your business. Now, there are certain taxes you don't pay when you own an enterprise, but you pay when you own a limited liability company. Again, we have heard from their perspective on the assumption that the tax officials that are coming are doing exactly what they are supposed to do. Am I correct? But oftentimes we have instances when the tax officials don't actually do what they are supposed to do. That is where some of the problems that you have, that is where they arise from, which are things that we need to address. So because we understand their language, 
they know that as entrepreneurs in Computer Village, you want to fulfill your civic responsibilities. You don't want to evade tax. But you will run because of the arbitrariness in the figures that they present before you. And that is what we have come to address. And how do you address that? We understand their language. And that is why we as Lagos and DC Society, you know, have put it upon ourselves to help you interpret that language from the language they are speaking to the language that you understand. We hear you loud and clear, Dr. Sonny. The members of your district and indeed Qualified and registered tax practitioners are an absolute necessity for any entrepreneur desirous of keeping his nose dry. In other words, being tax compliant. Like we always say on this program, business owners should engage the services of duly registered and qualified charter tax practitioners. Do not try to navigate the field by yourself. Having heard from the representatives of tax authorities, the entrepreneurs had their turn to make observations, ask questions, and make suggestions. Now, um, this place is supposed to be filled up with people. You know, some of our members really uh, may be thinking that we want to um, expose them to the tax people so they are running away. Uh, Meanwhile, we are trying to uh, see how we can fulfill our obligations as, as good citizens of Nigeria. And uh, working with uh, the, this fantastic uh, institution uh, is going to be easier for us. So quickly, I want to appreciate the leadership of the Shattered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. Uh, for deeming it fit to partner with the Coalition of Associations in Computer Village on their annual task week 2022. The Coalition of Associations in Computer Village is over 15 different associations coming together to form a union. This union covers over 90% of the business owners in Computer Village. Tax is a constitutional matter. That's why we are here today. Every good citizen must give its attention to be on the good side of the law. I am happy that today we are not only going to have lectures, but rather be educated on how to go about the payment of our taxes and also how to avoid pain heavily because of ignorance. Earlier in the program, Alaji Sodik, in the course of his presentation, spoke about corporate social responsibility activity or activities recently carried out by the FRS at the Ikerja Computer Village. Pastor Timmy David acknowledged this. Recently, the FRS donated a brand new boss to us in fulfillment of their corporate social responsibility. Please, can you help me give a round of applause for them? Yeah, we celebrate you, sir, once again. Yeah. Our union is so grateful for this, and we want to thank the leadership of the FRS once again. Isn't that wonderful? And then, the floodgate of questions. Personally, I've been thinking what Federal Inland Revenue Service uh, trying to tell us. And since they are looking at us, for example, a business name that registered social name with limited, that since that, that company as a, a Zedit Bank or Dangote as a group, because it's having the same limited liability name. But that is not how it's supposed to be to me. For example, there are some uh, members that have limited liability as a registered uh, company name. But in the near financial capacity, they are not running more than five million. And we will see at the end of the year, Federal Land Revolution will give them 20 million to pay as a tax. So it is confusing. I don't know where they're getting all this uh, record from. Please, sir. Who is to pay back in a particular uh, uh, market of goods? 
So for example, I'm, a, I, I'm an importer. I have a brand and I have a distributor and I have sub distributors and you have other sub sub distributors and these people are buying my brand, the particular brand I have. Who is paying this bad for that uh, item I'm selling? Is it me? Is it the dealer? Is it the sub dealer? Is it the sub sub dealer who is paying that? Because when you say consumer, uh, uh, we wait for the, the last person that is buying it to use. That's what I understood by consumer. But at the end of the day, you will still come to me and ask for the product I didn't use because I'm not a consumer, I sell. So who is to pay this bad in this particular brand I am selling? What we just want to understand is make this thing financially easy for us. In most cases, all those big companies, HP, they pay VAT while importing to government. And now a distributor goes to buy that same phone. And he's selling that same phone with a margin because of the competition in Computer Village with a margin of less, sometimes less than 0.5%. And now, because of, like Madame said, we don't have that culture of having so much records keeping. Now, federal government, because they have this thing with banks, banks will now furnish the account statement of the value or the volume of what these people, what they do, to federal inland revenue. And the moment they see that volume, they see a businessman that manages to buy a Tokumbo car of two point something million that he's doing. Because there's a volume of techno people that are doing this business because phone carries money. And they see hundreds of millions. They see hundreds of, some in, case, in some cases, one billion. Maybe this guy is just trying to squeeze profit of less than maybe two million from the entire volume. And they will not come and smash him because of the value of what they see in that account. As we speak, it is giving our members so much headache. So we will want, um, sir, the state coordinator, to please go use your good office. Since you've been interacting with us, people with good intent, with good spirit, you will know. Those with, um, I will kill you today, you will die today, you will know. <laughs> Sir has exhibited that character that he wants to help us. So we, you will want you, also now that we also have um, uh, the CITN to also explain some of these things. But most importantly, sir, you will use your office to Quell that thing. Let them not you look at that account statement, please. Just like uh, one of us mentioned, a customer can come to my place. I don't have what he's demanding for, but my neighbor have it. That particular item, maybe it is one million. I pick it from my neighbor and I just put two thousand naira and sold it one million two thousand. The money will register in my bank account, and when the tax people are looking for maybe activity. They will charge me based on that uh, one million. I only made 2,000, but they are charging me for one million. I cannot afford that particular product. I can't stock it, but I know who is stocking it. So when customer come, I go to the person that stocks it, and I will collect it and just make my 2,000. But you find out that I will be charged. VAT is multi-state. What do I mean by multi-state? Means that at any point in time, you know, it moves from one. When you import from the uh, from the port, manufacturer, you will pay at the port. If you have distributors and sub-distributors, depending on your e economic or business model, there are like MTN. MTN has distributors. You know. If the VAT is captured, if the VAT is captured once, if what the distributors do is not really selling, is a price that you know you have, everything is integrated. You pay the any other distributor. Every other distributor will is not buying and selling. But if the distributors are buying and selling. VAT must enter. That's why we have input and output components. 
if the distributors and sub distributors are selling no, then they have to give account of what is the output. The output is the sales. The input is the purchases. If I buy 100 and, and sell a 105, the uh, input and output will be on five. You know, if I had to sell 110, it will also, you know, vary. But there are distributors that don't add a single couple, apart from that output and input from, you know, the original, the original producer. Are you getting me? Like MTN, you can't say distributor A will sell a card 200 naira, and another distributor will sell it 300. They are selling it at a uniform price. So whoever you bought it from, you don't expect him you know, to uh, vary the amount. So that is what I need to say about VAT. I would like to take Mr. Sunday Obo on the limited liability company. Please let your members know, right? Having limited at the end of your name does not give you any status that I'm a big man or I'm not a big man. If your activities, your trade, does not require you to have a limited liability company, please let your members register a business name. There are, there are reasons why a number of people want to have limited liability company. When you go to the bank, some banks will say there is a limit to which they can give an enterprise. Trust me, your business never reached that level. As an enterprise, when your business is doing well, you can get as much loan as you want to get from the bank on the basis of the activity on your transaction. You dictate to them. But when you register a limited liability company as a small company, you, you have regulatory responsibilities that you must perform, and they're statutory. So that is why you have some people that have problems. So if there's no need, if you're not doing so much turnover, please, use a business name and you will just be able not to have a lot of those problems. Still on value added tax. Mr. Innocent Oragua, our DVP has explained to you that it depends on the model that you assume for your business. You said you have distributors and you have sub, sub distributors who bears the burden of the VAT. Now, let's assume that this phone is a 1,000 naira. Now, there is VAT element of 7.5% when you are selling that phone. Eh? At the point of sale, 7.5%. That, that comes to 75 naira. Now, you, that consumer that I bought that phone pays you 75 naira. But let me tell you one thing. You are not, you are, you are not to pay that 75 naira that you charge that person to the government. Don't forget that when you bought that phone from me, you bought it at 800 and you are selling at 1000 When you bought that phone from me, I will have charged you VAT on that phone when you are buying from me. When you want to remit money, the VAT to the government, what the government wants you to remit is 75 naira that you took from the person you sold to, remove the VAT in the invoice that me I gave you, the net position is what you remit to the government. Uh, on a general note, this issue of information we get, FRS gets, is, is almost unlimited. So it's not limited to even your bank accounts. Whatever you import or you, whatever transaction, except if it is smuggled, but if it is officially through either CBN or through imports, through custom or whatever, we get to know about it one way or the other. And most times, like you said, even though you did say it uh, in a very friendly way, we do not understand your businesses sometimes. It is left for you, if I write you a letter that, look, I check your bank account, I see 200 billion naira. Therefore, by my laws, I'm raising so much assessment for you to go and pay tax. It is not left for you to pick that letter I sent to you. Come to me, sit down with me, explain to me what the nature of your business is. So all we need is to bring for us documentary evidence that, no, this is how this input is for me. It is, that's the only way we can clear you from whatever liability you are doing to me. The event was rounded off with this comforting statement from Dr. Falashade Koka. As I tell people when I go out, I say, if the traders are not in business, then where does the tax um, authority come in? 
So for us, it's important that you stay in business. And it's when you stay in business that we can now demand tax. There you are. All you need to fulfill your obligations as a business owner, whether you're operating in the computer village in Lagos, trade free couplers, Ladipo Market, Onicho Market, New Industrial Hub, or the Kumi Market in Kano. For one on one encounter, you can walk into any state or federal tax office. Tax officials are always ready to help. And hey, it's a digital world. For the FRS, you have the contact center. By telephone, by social media, the FRS contact center is open 24-7. It's a digital world. Thank you for watching. See you online and offline until next week when we meet again. Have a beautiful week.